So constant speed means the sum of all the forces zero. If sum of all the forces equals zero means the force diagram in the end it gives you a closed shape. Right? We said any closed shape in the end the sum of all the forces would be zero. So for example, go this way and then coming back. Okay, this would be a closed shape. This would be a closed shape. This would be a closed shape. Okay, so any closed shape in the end, the sum of all forces would just equal zero. And we'll just look at them one by one. Okay, so for A, yeah, so you have yeah, one force goes this way, okay, another force goes this way, and another force goes this way. So you can see it's clearly not a closed shape, so the sum of all the forces doesn't equal zero. Okay, for B, yeah, yeah, one goes this way, one goes down, and then the last one goes up. It's perfectly closed, so the sum of all the forces equals zero. So in the exam paper, you can just draw it on the multiple choice questions. Right? And then for C, okay, you have like a really long line here, goes down, and then goes up. Okay, There's nothing to balance with that part of the vector. So again, the sum of all the forces doesn't equal zero, this will have a net acceleration. Okay? And you can conclude your net acceleration is moving in this direction. Okay, that's your F net force. And the last diagram is still okay. So you have this big giant force going this way, and then one force going this way, and another force going down. Okay, another force going down. And you can clearly see this part of the force there's nothing to balance. So this is your F net. Oh, sorry, the F net is going up. Yeah, so this is your net force. If you have a net force, there will be an acceleration moving in this direction, and it won't travel at a constant speed. Yeah, so you don't need to read any of this. You read constant speed, you just quickly come back and draw the pictures, and we know this question, you have to choose B. You have to choose B. Yeah, and then now let's have a look at question two. Question two again, read the questions. They said the acceleration, they ask you the acceleration in the horizontal direction. Okay, so they already said horizontal direction, you don't need to worry about the rest. Horizontal direction, this force will have a horizontal component that goes this way. Yeah. So you have a force goes this way, and we just want the horizontal component, and that angle there is theta. Right, that angle there is theta, the component will just be sine, right? That's the opposite side. Yeah, so f in the x direction just equals to f sine theta. They ask you acceleration, acceleration equals net force divided by mass. So f sine theta divided by m. F sine theta divided by m. So we we'll choose b. And then now let's have a look at the third question. Yeah, the third question again, you just need to read one word equilibrium. Okay, equilibrium. And then they just ask you the magnitude of the resultant force of F1 and F2 is. Okay, yeah. Okay. So if we just, uh, so if they didn't mention equilibrium, okay, if they didn't mention equilibrium, they just ask you the magnitude of the resultant force of F1 to F2. You need to know this. Okay, so if F1 equals to 3 newton, f2 equals to 4 newton, f1 plus f2 is ranged from any, any is ranged anywhere from 0 to 7 newton. Oh, sorry, it can't equals to 0, yeah, 1 to 7 newton. Yeah. Yeah. So when we add f1, f2, you can go anywhere from 1 to 7 newton. If you want to create the minimum force, is when they go opposite direction. This is your 3 newton, this is your 4 newton. Okay. And overall, the net force equals to 1 newton. If you want to create the maximum force, this is 3 newton, this is 4 newton, and their net force equals to 7 newton. Okay. So theoretically, if we just want the magnitude of F1, F2, it goes every, anywhere from 1 newton to 7 newton. Okay, 1 newton to 7 newton. And you might say, oh, how do we get other, all the other forces? You keep 4 newtons, stay here constant. Sorry. 
Let me just draw it a little bit above. You keep four newton constant in this direction. You changing the angle of that three newton. Okay, you changing the angle of this three newton. So three newtons can go the same direction as this four newton. Slightly up, slightly up, slightly up, slightly up, slightly up, slightly up. Okay. So when the three newton rotate this entire circle, it reduces the net force from seven newton to six newton to five newton to four newton all the way down to one newton. Okay, that's how we get all those values. Okay, but they told you they are in equilibrium, right? Means F1 plus F2 Yeah, so in equilibrium, which is F1 plus F2 equals plus F3 equals to zero. Right. Yeah, so if we just want to want F1 plus F2, that's equals to minus F3. Okay, minus F3. So F3 is 6 newtons, F1 plus F2 is 6 newtons in the opposite direction. And they didn't ask you, they just asked you the magnitude, so we just choose 6 newtons. And then question four. Okay. Yeah, so the question four says the body falls vertically. Okay, the body falls vertically. And yeah, that's the keyword. It falls vertically in this direction. The air resistance can be neglected. What is the tension in the string? Okay, they ask you what's the tension in the string. Yeah. So force vertically, there is no other force, no air resistance. No air resistance means it is free fall. No air resistance means free fall, right? Free fall only the only force acting on these two objects is gravity. Okay, so whenever they say free fall uh, or no air resistance, you just need to understand the only force act on the object is gravity. Yeah, so if the only force act on the object is gravity, this uh, yeah, so this strain is nothing. Okay, this strain is kind of useless. So we know the tension in the string would be zero. Okay. So force vertically, no air resistance, we conclude it's free fall. Free fall, we know the only force acting on the object is gravity. So there's no other forces. No other forces, tension obviously just equals to zero. Now let's have a look at question five. Question five, they have ceiling here, okay? So we know clearly it's not free fall. And they ask you, what is the tension in X and the tension in Y? Okay, so these two tensions are obviously different. Okay, so we're just using the system method. Let's quickly draw this together. So if you want to work out the tension in X, if you want to work out a, if you want to work out the tension in X, you need to look at all the things below X. These two balance them out. Right. Yeah, so the up equals the down. So all the up, all the force down is seven newtons. The force goes up must be seven newtons. Okay, seven newtons. And then if you want to work out the tension in y, okay, all the tension in y, you just need to look at yeah. So you just need to look at all the things attached to y. Yeah. So there are four newtons going down, and there must be two uh, two newtons going down. There must be two newtons going up. Okay, two newtons going up. Yeah, so combine the 7 newton and 2 newton will choose B. Yeah, so just need to look at what is below the string. Okay, what's below the string. And then question 6. Okay, question 6. So they collide. Okay, so they collide means it's action and reaction force. Right? Action and reaction force. Okay, so action and reaction force, they are equal magnitude. Okay, opposite direction. Equal magnitude, opposite direction. So we choose B. And then question seven. Yeah, question seven. They ask you, uh, yeah. So they ask you which statement is true for the force acting on the boat as it slows down, right? As it slows down. So slows down means the backward force is diminished with time. Okay, slows down means the backward force diminished with time. That's question seven. Now let's have a look at question eight. Yeah, question eight again highlights the keywords. You don't need to read the entire thing. Okay, so accelerate 
vertically downwards. Okay, accelerate vertically down. Oh, sorry, vertically upwards. So this is the direction of acceleration. They ask you the rating of the scale. Okay, you need to know what is the rating of the scale. Okay, the rating of the scale tells you the reaction force of the normal force. So they just ask you this F N dash. Yes, that's what they're asking. So you have a person stand here. The weight force going down, the normal force going up. Okay. So because it's accelerated upward, so it's accelerated upwards, then uh, yeah, we don't even know what's acceleration. So yeah, so the rating on the scale is Fn dash, which just equals to Fn. Okay, just Fn itself. So which is just this R. Okay. R is the reaction force from the scale. Uh, if they do give you the acceleration, because now it's acceleration upwards, okay, now it's acceleration upwards, we know Fn minus W equals to Ma. Yeah, so if you want to figure out Fn, Fn just equals to Mg plus Ma. Okay, yeah. So the normal force, yeah, so when it's accelerated upwards, the scale shows, the number shows on the scale, it's much larger than your weight. Okay, Fn equals Mg plus Fn. Uh, mg plus ma. Therefore, your fn dash obviously also equals mg plus ma. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, if you want to change b, it's a weight force plus a net force. Okay, weight force plus a net force. A and d, they just completely wrong. Okay, C is the correct answer. And then, question 9 is exactly the same. They said the scale raise 12 kilograms. Okay, this just means your Fn dash. Equals to 12 kilograms, okay, which is 120 Newton. And then I told you the weight is 10 kilograms. So the weight is 100 Newton. Okay, weight is 100 Newton. Okay. So scale rates more than what you have. Right? So Fn dash is greater than the weight force means it's accelerated upwards. Right? means it's accelerated upwards. So first of all, we know it's going up. And then we know F net equals to Fn minus W, which is 120 minus 100, give you 20 newtons. Yeah, 20 newtons on 10 kilograms acceleration equals to F net divided by M, 20 divided by 10, which is 2 meter per second squared. Uh, so we just choose B here. Uh, two meters per second square going upwards. Hmm. Now let's have a look at the question ten. Yeah, for question ten, first of all, they told you a pulley, and then this is the same strain, right? We said the same strain; they must have the same tension force. Same strain; they must have the same tension force. Yeah, so you just look at A and D, they are completely wrong. So yeah, so the, the two tension force must be the same magnitude. You just left with uh, B and D. You just left with B and D. However, the entire system, because this capital M is greater, right? The entire system is accelerated in this direction. Right? Yeah, so for B, this force must be larger than the blue force. And for the blue force, it must be larger than this force over here. Okay, so overall, it can accelerate this in this direction. However, for, for B, you can see the little m stay still, right? There's no acceleration, which is impossible, right? Yeah, they are in a system, they must have the same acceleration. So you can't have one object accelerate, the other object doesn't accelerate. So the answer will be B in this case. Okay. So for question 11, they told you pull the long, okay? So pull the long by a force which is 5 Newton, and there's also a friction force, 0 0.5 Newton in the other direction, okay? So F net just equals to larger force minus a smaller force equals to 4.5 Newton. Okay, so acceleration equals the net force divided by mass, which is 4.5, Divide by 1.5 equals to 3 meter per second square. And I will just choose C here. Okay. 
Yeah, just read the questions carefully. Don't forget the additional friction force, although they didn't label it on the diagram. And then for question 12, for question 12, we can do free body diagram and analyze each of these, okay? But we said this is a multiple choice question. For multiple choice question, we just always use method tool and use method tool, treat everything as a system. Treat everything as a system. So treat everything together and then just treat this as a system. Yeah, so in this system, you only have two things. Right? So in this system, so in this system we have F. So F means the net force. F net equals to the mass of the system multiplied by acceleration. So your acceleration equals to F net divided by the mass of the system. And the mass of the system will just be the big mass and small mass, which is m plus m. So we know the denominator must be m plus m. It's either a or d. And then think about the net force. Okay, yeah. So because the capital M is greater than, yeah, this way it's accelerated this way, and then this mass here is accelerated in the, in this direction, in this direction. So if we just treat these two boxes as a big system, uh, where should I draw? It? I'll just draw it down here. So this two board, this two box is a system. Okay? This two box is a system. There is a force in this direction. There is also a force in this direction. Okay, so this force, this big mg is greater, and that small mg is, uh, uh, yeah, a lot less than this big mg. So it is the net force will just be the bigger force minus smaller force. F net just equals to capital mg minus lower mg. Okay, so this is your numerator, and then in the end we we'll just choose a here. Okay, we we'll just choose a here. Yeah. And then the next question, the next question, again, you just need to read one keyword, equilibrium. Right? Equilibrium just means sum of all force zero, and it also means it will give you a closed shape. Right? It will give you a closed shape. So when the sum of all force equals zero and it's in equilibrium, the resultant of all forces on any direction must be zero. Right? And question 14. Yeah. So question 14, again, equilibrium we know, closed shape. So we'll just go over them one by one, see whichever of these give you a closed shape. Okay, whichever of these of you, uh, this give you a closed shape. Yeah. So A, yeah. so for A, we have oh yeah, one force going this direction, one force going down. And then one force going this way, and it is not closed. And for B, yeah, one force going this way, one force going down, one force goes up. You are missing this many space, not closed. And for C, it's yeah, this force goes this direction, this direction, this direction. Yeah, missing something. And for D, you can just say it's like a perfect. So it's it's exactly the same as A, but this length is slightly longer, right? And we know if you want a perfect the right angle triangle, goes. Yeah, Right angle or isosceles triangle, one, one, root two, right? One, one, this side must be root two. So the oblique lines must be longer. Okay, oblique lines must be longer. So D is the perfect choice. Okay. It follows one, one, root two. Okay. For right angle triangle. And then question 15. Yeah, and then again, the bird would be in equilibrium if okay, the bird would be in equilibrium if. Yeah, so let's just draw a free body diagram. This is F. This is another F. This is the weight force. Okay, so those the two forces are just the tension force. They should be F T. Okay, they are the tension force. And if we just say this angle here is theta, okay, this angle here is theta, then the Vertical, yeah, the vertical component would just be Ft cos theta, right? So we have 2F cos theta equals to W. And the cos theta is between 0 and 1, right? So the 2F is definitely larger than the weight force. 
and the 2f is definitely larger than the weight force. 2f multiplied by a fraction equals w, therefore 2f is larger. And then question 16. Yeah, question 16 is exactly the same. Okay, the wires make an angle theta with a vertical. So here is your theta. Okay, here is your theta. Yeah, so they just ask you which of the force equals the tension of the wire. Yeah, so you want to work out the tension. The tension has a vertical component and has a horizontal component. The two horizontal components balance each other out. This vertical component is T, so here is theta. Right? Yeah, so the vertical component is on the adjacent side, so that's T cos theta. Right? So here is T cos theta. Yeah, so this diagram, if you draw it properly, you just have, uh, oops. Yeah, you just have t cos theta goes up, t cos theta goes up, and then w goes down. Right, so two t cos theta equals w, t equals to w divided by two cos theta. So we just choose. And then now let's look at question 17. Okay, again, the same question. And they ask you about equilibrium. Equilibrium just means uh, there's a balanced force. Okay, no resultant force on the object in any direction. And then question 18. Okay, so this type of question is very, very you know, frequent. You must know how to do it. Yeah, yeah. And they just told you, Again, constant speed. They didn't say equilibrium, whatever. They say constant speed. Constant speed they just told you the sum of all the forces equals to zero. I mean, the sum of all the forces equals zero. Yeah, so all you need to do is just check each of the choice. Make sure the normal force, the friction force, and the weight force, overall, they have a closed shape. Okay, so just try them one by one. You will find that only B works. Okay, all the rest are not closed. They are not closed. We need to make sure it must be closed. Okay, now let's look at question 19. Hmm. Yeah, question 19 in this diagram, you can see this stays stationary. Yeah, stationary also tells you that Newton's first law, the sum of all the forces, must equal zero, therefore it again must be a closed shape. It must be a closed shape. Yeah. And yeah, so they ask you which uh, repre uh, which of them best represent the force acting on the pignit. Okay, pignit. So yeah. the pig is over here. Okay, so the peak is over here. So you can see the peak has three different force. So the peak has three different force. Along this direction, there is a tension force. Okay, along this direction, there is also a tension force. And it goes up. Right? It goes up, that's a normal force because yeah, there is a normal force goes up. So the three force is up, down, and down. Okay, We just ignore the weight force. Ignore the weight force, so that's uh, the three forces. So it's either B or D, either B or D. But from B or D, you can see this. Yeah. So from B or D, you can see if you're trying to do add them up, yeah, only B will work. Yeah, only B will work when you draw in the diagram. Yeah, so, yeah, so you can just yeah print them out and then draw it for B. It's one, one. And another one goes up. Okay, it's perfectly closed, and all the rest are not closed. So that's question nineteen. Now let's have a look at question twenty. For question twenty, they ask you the ratio of the centripetal force to the cent centripetal force as F one uh, S one to centripetal force on S two. Okay. So centripetal force divided by centripetal force. The two satellite has equal mass. Okay, equal mass just means it's a centripetal acceleration divided by the centripetal acceleration. Okay, and then we know centripetal acceleration equals to v squared over r. 
v squared over r. And I told you, uh, yeah, so one is at distance r, one is at distance 2r, and one of them is speed v, and one of them is speed v over root 2. V over root 2. Yeah. And it is asking you the ratio of the centripetal force on S1 to centripetal force on S2. So S1, yeah, it's V squared over R, so it's just V squared over R. V is V, R is R. For S2, V become V over root 2, so V squared is V over root 2 all squared. And r become 2r, yeah, so combine everything together, is v squared over 4r. Right, v squared over 4r. Yeah, and then they ask you 1 to 2. Yeah, so you just use 1 divided by 2. Yeah, v, v cancelled, r, r cancelled. 1 and 4 overall just become 4. Right, so we just choose c. And you use s1 divided by s2, and overall just give you a 4. And then for question 21, you don't even need to read the question, right? The acceleration always towards the center, so velocity must be always perpendicular. So they must be perpendicular, you just choose either B or C. This is impossible, okay? We'll never have this kind of scenario. Because once the acceleration and the velocity in the same direction, this would be straight line motion, right? So this would be straight line motion, and this would also be a straight line motion. And then for B, it's still a circular motion, but what kind of circular motion you will have? Acceleration always towards the center of the circular motion. Okay? Acceleration always towards the center of the circular motion. So if you have your velocity and acceleration in B, then the circular motion would be the green version. Right? Because we know acceleration always towards the center of the circle. Okay? Not the speed. Yeah, so if you have B, the circular motion looks like that. And for question 22, so for question 22, they ask you the resultant force on the mass. Yeah, so the resultant force acting on the mass, they just ask you the centripetal force Fc. Centripetal force always directly towards the center of the circular path. This is exactly the same as, oops, exactly the same as AC. For centripetal acceleration, AC is also directly towards the center of the circular path. Yeah, and then question 23, that is our lazy Susan question. Right. So this is a lazy Susan question. Yeah, so exactly the same disk. Right. Same disk with the same angular speed. Same angular speed. Okay. Oops. Yeah, and then one way they ask you to compare the linear speed and centripetal acceleration. So the linear speed v equals to omega multiplied by r, right? Higher the radiance, larger the linear speed. Centripetal acceleration equals to omega squared r, again, higher the speed, sorry, higher the radiance, larger the centripetal acceleration. Yeah. So therefore, you can just conclude uh, your C is answer. So double the radiance, double the linear speed, double the radiance, double the acceleration. So 2r, you just double the linear speed, double the centripetal acceleration. Yeah. And when we compare P and Q, their frequency are the same, their period would be the same. If frequency and period would be the same for both P and Q. Yeah. And then they ask you, the centripetal force caused the car go around in the road uh, is provided by the friction between the tire and the road. Yeah. And then in the exam, they must ask you what type of friction. We know this is static friction. Yeah. 
Although it's traveling but it's not moving up and down the incline, this is a static friction. Yeah, this is static friction. And then for question five, question twenty-five, if you remember it correctly, you must choose D. Right, just quickly write down all of them again. So F equals to M would be V squared over R, omega squared R, V omega, four pi squared R on T squared, four pi squared R F squared. You need to remember all these five formulas for the rest of two years. Now, question 26. So they ask you which diagram represent delta V. So we summarize the change and loss. So change in V equals to V final minus V initial. So what's the loss in speed? Loss in speed just equals to V initial minus V final. So you just need to read the question carefully. In this case, they ask you to, to change. Okay, so change equals to final minus initial. Right? Yeah, so it's going around in this direction. So Q is your final, P is your initial. Right? Q is final, P is initial. Okay, so delta V just equals to VQ minus VP. Delta V is equals to VQ minus VP. So VQ is going this direction and VP is going this direction. Okay, so they give you the same P and Q. Okay, they give you the same. So this is always P. Uh, P here. This is P. This is P. This is also P. Okay, so this is the four P's. And then they also give you Q. So they also give you a Q. So this is Q, this is Q, this is Q, this is Q. Okay, yeah. So obviously for A, this is P plus Q. Right? So the diagram V give it to you is VP plus VQ. VP plus, plus VQ, the head to tail. And then B, it's a reverse of VP plus VQ. That's VP minus VP minus VQ. Yeah, this is minus VP minus VQ. That's a negation of VP plus VQ. And for question C, this is VQ minus VP. Okay, that's just the delta V. And then for question D, in the other direction, this is VP minus VQ. So you just need to recognize what each of these diagrams give it to you. So C give you VQ minus VP, that's a change. Okay, D is VP minus VQ, that's a loss in speed. Okay. And then question 27, ob object rests on horizontal plane, angle that does make horizontal plane slowly increase from 0, 1, theta equals theta node. The object starts to slide. Okay, so now this is your theta node start to slide. And then they ask you what's the coefficient of static friction? Okay, yeah. So start to slide means it hasn't slide yet. It hasn't slide yet. So this is your weight force. Yeah. So without looking at the weight force, we know there are two components. One is W sine theta. That's a tendency to go down the incline. And another force is W cos theta that balance with your normal force. Right, so your normal force equals W cos theta. Okay, normal force here equals to W cos theta. And you just need to think about what's uh, yeah, what's the uh, static coefficient. Yeah, so the friction force, the tendency goes down, then your static friction must go up. So Fs equals W sine theta. And then we know Fs equals to mu Fn, which is mu W cos theta. Right. Yeah, so W sine theta equals mu W cos theta. W W cancelled sine divided by cos is ten. Yeah, so mu just equals to ten theta naught. Yeah, yeah, so we just choose D. And then for question twenty-eight. Yeah, question twenty-eight again under the Lady Susan question, the disc is doing the rotations. Yeah, the they ask you what represents the horizontal force. Yeah, acting on the brick, we said the force, centripetal force, must towards the center. It must towards the center. Yeah, so we just choose D. We just choose D. And there is no way you can have any force 
in that direction. Okay, even you have friction force, friction force is towards the center. Yeah, because there's only yeah, so this break there's no other force. The only force is friction. Friction is acting towards center. Okay, there is only one force, and that's a friction force. And now we know the tendency of motion is moving away from the disc. Yeah, so your static friction yeah, is moving towards the center of the yeah, moving towards yeah, yeah, towards the center. And then question 29, which of the following proportions of the net external force acting on a body? Yeah. So we know F net equals to mass multiplied by acceleration. Acceleration is changing velocity divided by changing time. Right? Yeah. So changing the velocity divided by changing time is the rate of change of velocity. And not speed because that's a scalar. Question 30. So what time is taken for the stone to hit the surface of the lake? Hit the surface of the lake. So you can just separate this into two stages. So the first stage is when it's reached the highest point, and when it's reached the highest point. And then the second stage when it's reached the surface. We said these two, they are identical motion just in opposite direction. Right? So if we call this T1, this T2, T1 just equals to T2. Yeah, identical motion and just opposite direction. Yeah, so we just need to work out T1. Yeah, we just need to work out T1. Yeah, so T1 is one. Yeah, so T1 is the end, it will reach the maximum. Maximum, or when you change the. Yeah, so we said whenever we have the height max, maximum height, or when you change direction, right, this is all exactly the same. As speed equals to zero. Okay. Overall, the velocity equals zero at that point. So we're just using v equals to u plus at. So zero equals to your initial speed, the initial yeah, vertical speed. This vertical speed, that's v cos theta. Right? Yeah. So u is v cos theta plus minus g multiplied by t. So move minus g t to the other side t equals to v cos theta divided by g. Your v cos theta divided by g is the time from the bottom to the top, and from the bottom to the top, come back to the bottom, you need to multiply by 2. So it's 2v cos theta divided by g. Yeah. 